think that's the last time I will ever say that. And this was the perfect spot. I say it to the grandkids, we have 16 of them, and I say, hi kids, and they're very pleasant, and they all walk away. And I figured you were a captive audience. When I was in school, they taught us the definition of terms. And so, when I receive an award, never mind the name, but the award, Lifetime Achievement Award. And so I look at the definition of lifetime. I'm 89 years old. Bob Miller is in the hospital. He is 78. You all know young people who have passed away at a very, very early age. And I think lifetime. I had no control over that at all. I tried to live long and well, but it really wasn't in my hands. It truly was the grace of God to allow me to broadcast for 67 years. A lot of people don't live that long, do they? And yet, I had that job. No advancement, but I was... <laughs> so I realized that the lifetime is out of my hand. Another day, I've always known broadcasting, that it was a gift and I could lose it in a second, fraction of a second. So a lifetime was out of my hands. I truly believe it was God's grace. Then I look at achievement. If you looked me up, if you had that much time on your hands, to look up Google, let's say, and put in Scully, uh, they'd probably say something like, uh, broadcast 20 some odd no hitters, three perfect games, a thousand and one World Series and All-Star games, etc., etc., etc. And then I think about achievement. I didn't do anything. It was the grace of God that allowed me to be there to do those games. That was no fluke. There was some reason that I was supposed to be there. And that's a thought that is really humbling. So really and truly what the award is, it sounds great, but as the first recipient, it is just a tremendous reminder of the good fortune that I have had. It can't be any ego of a Lifetime Achievement Award if you realize where it come from and how lucky you were to be at the moment and there. How about the last game I'm going to broadcast at Dodger Stadium? Who could possibly believe that A, it would go extra innings, and B, the unknownest player, if there is ever such a word, Charlie Culberson hits the home run to win the game to give the team what they wanted, and it was his first and only home run of the year. And what was truly memorable because of Rick and Charlie, uh, Charlie had talked to Culberson, and Culberson said, I wonder if I could come up and say hello to Ben. Now, I had never met him. I saw him on the field, but I didn't meet him. And we were in San Francisco, and that, of course, was a hectic weekend. And Charlie came up to the booth carrying his bat. And I don't know what his religious background is or not, but I wrote on the bat, God bless you, Charlie, and signed my name. We're tied up forever. He, because he achieved, he accomplished. Me, same old story, I was just there to see it. So thank you for this remarkable, wonderful, humbling award. And every time I look at it, may I remember you and your thoughtfulness and kindness, but above all, may I realize how truly fortunate I have been. Thank you so very much.